as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, making sure that you have all of the strategies in place for a potential exit, for a succession plan, and to make sure that your business can run smoothly in your absence is critical. And we wanna to spend today talking about the next steps to your business. When we look at your business, there's a lot of different things that are happening, not only politically with respect to the business climate right now and geopolitically as well. But that doesn't matter when we are talking about the cash flow, all the things that you are making sure continue to keep happening. But what happens if you want to take a step back? What happens if you want to have an exit possibly or even have a succession plan in place that's going to work for you to make sure that you can go and do the what's next stage as part of your life. That's what we want to be talking about today, business succession. Now I am going to be walking through a couple different aspects with business succession. So we're going to start with five aspects that are kind of transition plans that you can be putting into place. Now obviously this is not an exhaustive list here, but it actually gets you thinking about what you want and the next steps that you would need to take in order to do that. So when we take a look at business succession, the first thing you can be looking at is, do you have a co-owner? So someone who is owning the company with you and one who may actually be able to buy out your shares. You see, when we take a look at it this way, a co-owner is one that is basically a succession plan that's already in place. And for some of you, that may be someone who is 10 years younger than you. Maybe it's one that you have groomed up over the years to be this owner, to be this succession plan. That would be a, an incredible place to start, to take a look at where those, those people are going with the company, to kind of groom them to be the ones to take over the company or maybe it's a co-owner that helped found the company, well, just making sure that they are in place and have the desire to take over and run the company in your absence. But that's a great place to start to have a plan in place where they would be purchasing those shares of your company from you and can have the succession in place so that you have all of the key contacts still there, you have all of your key uh, relationships still there with your vendors, with your customers, with those that you care about. So a business owner, a co-owner is one that would be an incredible opportunity for you to be selling your shares to. Now, outside of that though, maybe you have your kids that want to be involved. So your heirs, that's another aspect to be considering. Maybe you actually do still have a co-owner or someone that you have groomed up, but that's not going to be it for you. You've really thought through this. You as a family have come together and said, you know what? We want to maintain this in the family and the kids are going to be stepping up into this role. So a, w one way they can help obviously work this is obviously making sure that they are ready for this. They have the desire to do this. They have the passion, the, the kind of the, the thoughts, the just all the knowledge necessary to run the company. So hopefully they've been a part of the company in order to do this, but now they need to finance it as well. So that's a part of it is the financing piece. That's a part of it, the knowledge piece. Well, how do we go about doing all this? The knowledge piece, obviously that is something that is not going to be just a one and done place. That's going to be from years of you helping to make this happen, helping to show them the correct way to be building the company the way that you wanted to. And yes, they're gonna have their own thoughts, they're gonna have their own directions, their own ways of going for it, but it's just another aspect for you to be working on. Financing piece is a little more simple when it comes to what they can be doing. They can go out and get a loan, so they can be uh, working with banks, they can be working with other types of entities to receive money that they can be paying you off for your shares. That's a piece of it. Uh, another piece they can be working on is a gifting aspect where you have gifted money to them and they turn around and purchase shares from you. So this all comes back down to a personal wealth plan that you have as well. 
what is your wealth plan and how is that going to be relating to how do you want to keep the business in the family or make transitions to it. And that will help determine the path that you go down for helping to fund these types of transfers. So you can be using the company as collateral as part of a loan. You can be using cash flow from the company as well. So you can have the cash flow starting to pay out to you for your shares over a period of time. And that's all comes again back to what you want from your company and from your exit strategy. Again, this is for the what's next that you have, the, the changes. So it may not be retirement, but it may be the next stage of your kind of plan that you have for your life, your family. And that is what ultimately is going to drive which aspect we're going to go down with part of the planning for how to fund these types of transfers. Okay, co-owners are that's a little bit more self-explanatory just because of the fact that they can get personal financial loans from there. You can go with cash flow from the company. There's a lot that they can do. The heirs going to your son, your daughter, those can be a little more tricky because now we have to make a lot more plans in place of how to finance it correctly so that they know that they have the ability to take care of themselves, but also that they know that they're going to be in charge of taking care of you as well. Okay. Now there's going to be other aspects and I want to walk through the third aspect, which is talking to key employees. So they may not be owners right now, but they may be ones that are a very integral piece of your company and you want to be building them up. You want to be making sure that they are going to take over the company and they're going to be treating it well. So there's a number of opportunities that you have here and this is actually a really good uh, place to start as well because of the fact that these are uh, people that are already kind of living and breathing the company. They have the ideas, they have the knowledge, they even have a lot of the connections that you have to your customer base. That is why a key employee would be a very good individual to take over the company. So again, we can talk about cash flow to pay this off, uh, pay you off and pay out your succession. We can be talking about different types of loans that they can take, or we can even be talking about an ESOP, an employee owned stock fund, where they'd be purchasing into the company over time and actually adding to their shares over time. So key employees are an incredible opportunity and they have a lot of different ways that they can be working with the funding aspect to make sure again, that you are taken care of on the purchase price. So, that's also something you want to be considering. What is going to be your purchase price? So a valuation is going to come into this. You're going to have the company valued and a value that's going to the employees are going to be completely different. Or even say your co-owners or your children are going to be completely different than if we have going to say a third party. That's our fourth way that we can have a succession plan in place is by going to a third party. Now the third party is a probably a separate company or a separate owner that would step in and purchase the shares outright. It could be something that is a very uh, timely and strategic type of a movement, or it could be something that they just are wanting to buy you out to basically say, I don't want your company to exist anymore so we can be a better uh, company without you. And either way, it, this again is your company. So you're going to have to make the determination this, but a third party, another company is going to be one that will most likely give you the most money for the company outright. And they're going to be getting their own funding. They're going to be getting their own, own sources of things. And that will be more of an upfront payment. Some will want to have you staying on and in business and, and part of the business for a couple of years afterwards to make the transition happen. Others may say, you know what? You are free to go the minute you get your check. So there are many opportunities with that as well. And, and it's something just to be considering that you may have that be a better strategy for your company and where we're at today. Now, there are, there's a fifth way that we can be talking about this as well. And that is how we can be actually selling your shares back to the company itself. So we're not talking about a third party that's coming in. We're talking about your own company and you may have multiple owners and one owner is not going to potentially be buying you out. 
but if the company itself, and it could come from many different ways and sources, so you can issue some debt, you can be taking out loans, you can be having the free cash flow to pay for this, but the company itself will be purchasing your shares. So the company, instead of all of the different owners and different pieces, would be purchasing your shares. And basically what that will do is the other owners of the business will kind of have a drive up of their ownership over time as it's paying you out. So whether you are wanting to have your heirs, whether you're wanting to sell back to the company, whether you are wanting to be just having some key employees take over it, the succession that you go down, the plans in place that you go down are really going to come back to your needs, your desires, your wishes. So I encourage you to take some time at this. And this is not something that's going to be done easily. This is not going to be something that is just going to happen overnight. And especially when it comes to the valuation piece. I know you probably have something in your mind that is a number that you want to hit. It's something that uh, a target for what you want to receive, whether it's prior to taxes or after taxes. Now that valuation is most likely, what's in your head is most likely different from what may actually be true. And here's the thing, the succession plan that you have in place, what you're going through right now is very indicative of your valuation. And so whether you have a turnover of clients, that's going to impact your valuation. Whether you have a turnover of some of your employees, that could potentially impact your valuation. Your processes, you see, those are going to be some of the biggest aspects as part of having an increased valuation is making sure that the company can sustain itself correctly without you. See, that's what a potential owner doesn't want to step into is saying, I want to basically purchase this company and have it fall apart without you. So having the processes laid out, having the employees on board with this and the strategies behind that, having other owners a piece of this, that all comes back to the valuation and, and how much of a valuation you're going to be getting for your company. Now, it also is indicative of the industry. So some of you may only get, uh, say, one times revenue. Others of you, it would not be hard to say you could get five times or 10 times your revenue for a valuation of your company. But it all comes back, like I said, to how you go through today. And this is not an easy process. This is not something that is going to happen overnight. So in your succession plan that you want for yourself, you're going to have to start thinking about the time frames as well. See, to put the process in place, to put the people in place that are going to be part of this is going to be really time consuming and something you need to spend the time on to get the correct evaluation. So with that, the five ways of people that can be coming in, different companies, different aspects are part of it. The valuation, what you're going to get is a personal number and there's going to be many ways to make that happen, but making sure you have the processes, the people, and then all of the different aspects of the company kind of tied up tightly so it can happen without you. It's going to get the highest valuation and the most for your money. All right, well, we've gone through a number of different ways for you, and this is just a starting point of your wealth plan. So I would encourage you to keep looking more. I would encourage you to keep diving into your wealth plan more, and you are going to come out whether it's just exiting your company, whether it's retirement, whether it's what you want to have as a transition to the next stage, you're going to come out better for everything that you're doing today. If you like this show, the strategies, the thought processes, whether it is for the wealth plan of you personally or for your business itself, feel free to like this and share this show with others because this is the way that you can be helping to better not only your life, but also the ones around you and by creating an impact. And I look forward to seeing you on the next show that we have.